okay. That's step one of the process. Please, please, please KO the max cow. Oh, that did a lot less than I thought. A new ranked season begins and we're going to be trying out a crazy team that finished rank 60 in the last ranked season featuring Rumpig alongside Braviary, Booster Energy Speed, Iron Treads. It's an absolutely insane team. This is also the same person who created the Raikou as well as the Glycopod team and finished in the top cut of the World Championship in 2022. Absolutely insane team builder. Reviews the teams before like Pyro and Tropius on the channel. Absolutely insane builder. I'm excited to see how this team goes. Let's get started. This team features some off meta picks like a Solvest Grumpig, Braviary, and Booster Energy Iron Treads. This team is hard to describe, but I'll give it my best go. With Braviary, you can set up Tailwind and threaten any Intimidates alongside Facade to punish any statuses besides Sleep onto Braviary. You have Iron Treads with Speed Booster Energy to help against Fluttermane and Endeavor to weaken something after taking a lot of damage. The Mirror Herb Tauros helps against King Gambit and a cool tech to deal with Dundozo with a potential Mirror Herb to gain the boost so you can endeavor at a low percentage and then follow up with a close combat for the knockout assuming you're still around and then you can outspeed the Tatsugiri thanks to the boost if it's Choice Scarf and close combat for the knockout as well. The Assolves Grump Pick helps against Armourouge and Entity, especially with the Thick Fat and resisting the Expanding Force with the Terra Dark on top of that but can be a pretty nice disruption into other things like Sun and Iron Bundle. The goal is to weaken things with Endeavor to set up cleanups for Fluttermane or Screamtail, which is bulky, to tank attacks and can clean up in the end. If you'd like to check out the creator or the details of the team, they'll be linked in the description. All right, we have Nick here with the Palafin, Arcanine, Gothitelle, Iron Hands, Amoongus, and the Fluttermane. This is the team that did win the most recent Knoxville Regional Championship. And... Really, I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do in general against these kind of teams, but I do have a few answers. I do really like the Poros is pretty good here. Intimidate's really solid. My own Fluttermane, of course, is fantastic here because, again, Gothitelle can be a little bit tricky. Don't know if I really want to go with something like the uh, Grumpick here. It can do a lot of work against the Iron Hands, which is why I'm considering it. And it should be able to tank like an attack or two decently with the Assault Vest. Uh, this is a bit tricky. Braviary is pretty good for the a Flutter main Ghost immunity. As well as just being able to do a pretty good amount. Especially if they give me the Defiant Boost from the Arcanine Intimidate. Uh, Flutter main can of course do a lot of work here. Yet I'm not exactly 100% certain. I think I'm going to try out with the Braviary lead. I think Braviary plus the Flutter main is not a bad lead here. Especially offensively. And in the back, ooh, I do want the Tauros because I do want to have something that can switch into Palafin decently. And then last Pokemon is either Screamtail or the Grumpig. I'm going to try out the Grumpig. You know what? It's on this team. Iron Hands is a Pokemon that can give me a little bit of problems. Why not? I don't really like the Iron Treads here because even though like Iron Treads could technically do some work, I'm not 100% certain uh, if this is the team where there is an Iron Hands, there's a Gothitelle that can set up Trick Room. This doesn't seem like the best option. Arcanine with Intimidate, Palafin with the Jet Punch doesn't seem as strong. So Palafin, Arcanine. Oh, I love Braviary and uh, Braviary eating good right here. Braviary is absolutely eating good here. Okay, perfect. The only problem is I don't know if I'm faster than the Arcanine because I kind of doubt I'm faster than the Arcanine. Uh, because a lot of Arcanines do run a lot of speed. However, I do have Facade. Now, Facade is a really cool tech that I could uh, bring out later. So, I'm going to Tailwind right here. Just set up my Tailwind pretty consistently. And I do kind of want to... Do I want an Energy Ball or do I want to... I feel like I should Shadow Ball the Palafin or Moonblast. I could also Gleam here. Gleam for Chip isn't too bad. I do kind of like the Energy Ball play as well. You know what? I Dazzling Gleam here in case the Iron Hands comes in for Chip. We're going to see the Palafin Retreat here. If Amoongus comes out, that's fine because then I click uh, Facade into it. Yeah, like Amoongus does come out. So uh, Dazzling Gleam gets me some Chip damage in Arcanine at least. And this should be a Willisp into the Braviary, which is perfect right here. Okay, so Braviary was faster. I could have Braver, but I think this is okay. Having that speak advantage is just really nice in general. We're going to see the Willisp and it does go into Braviary. Perfect. So this is plus one Braviary with Facade now. And Facade... I want to say we'll KO that Amoongus, but I'm not guaranteed right here. However, I don't see a reason why I don't just click Facade here. So I will go for the Facade into the, I think, Arcanine slot in case Amoongus decides to go for Protect here. 
which it could against a brave bear bird if it fears it also like brave it's not really doing too much so i might as well just go for it they eat a rage powder or they spore attempt the flutter main which i think is okay in both odds oh they go for protective arcanine interesting here all right and then the mungus is i don't think it's clear smog on this team i think it's protects but maybe i'm wrong because it does have a perish mode yeah they went for spore in the flutter main that makes a lot of sense to me so they now know i have facade which is a little bit unfortunate however really i don't think that this is that bad right here i'm gonna be able to go for a facade and it's gonna be really powerful i'm gonna go for facade into the uh i think facade is okay into the amoongus slot yeah i like the facade into the amoongus slot and go out into the grump pig right here i like the grump pig because i think flare Blitz comes out you're not gonna you don't have Snarl most likely, and you're not going to Snarl in this position. There's no way you click Snarl in this position. I want to save Tauros as a switch in for the uh, Palafin plus Arcanine when they're out together. So I have that Intimidate. So this is the reason I'm going to Grumpig because it also can take the Flare Blitz because of its Vic Fat ability. A uh, Facade going to come out into Moongus plus one. Burned. Not enough, but still a very good amount of damage. As the Amoongus is going to heal up with a Citrus Berry. There should be a Flare Blitz coming out. Maybe it's into Braviary? No, it's going to target down Flutter Main. Because Flutter Main is still a threat to them, so not too surprising. I am able to take that extremely well with the Grumpig, actually. Like, that was very impressive, actually. Okay. Looking like a really good turn. No Gothitelle is really nice. Let's see. How fast is this Grumpig? This Grumpig is slower. Okay, so Amoongus can redirect first, which is okay. I'm going to go for a facade here into the Arcanine slot, and I'm just going to go for a Psy Shock into the Amoongus, I think. Uh, they retreat Amoongus, which is interesting. If I target that slot, it would have been really bad for them, but there's probably Palafin coming. Oh, it's Fluttermane. Oh, that's really good for me, actually, because I get a free Psy Shock into the Fluttermane. Arcanine going to protect, which makes a lot of sense here. Okay, I'll definitely take that. I get some free good damage into the Fluttermane right there. So I facade into what was the Arcanine and Psy Shock what was initially in Amoongus, but... This will probably do, I'd say, 50%. Yeah, very, very solid damage. And if I'm not mistaken, the usual is going to be a... The Braviar was faster than the Arcanine. Tailwind Peter's out. I don't really need Tailwind for the rest of the game. Yeah, because I have very fast Pokemon. So I'm just going to go for Facade and Arcanine. They have no switches other than the Fluttermane that just came in. And I'm going to just Psy Shock the Fluttermane. I don't think it was Terra Steel on this team. I don't think it was. But of course, they could change it. We're going to see Extreme Speed come out, which is fine because it activates my Citrus Berry, which I had a feeling like if they doubled up right here, a Barrier should be able to live a Moonblast unless it's like a boost of Fluttermane. And I guess I'll trade Barrier for uh, the Fluttermane right here because my idea is getting in my... Oh my goodness, they gave me a special attack to Fire Boost. Okay, okay, Facade. Oh my goodness, look at this power. Goodbye, Arcanine. <laughs> Goodbye, Arcanine. Arcanine just obliterated right there. And we get a Psy Shock into the Fluttermane. What is this game? Goodbye, Fluttermane. Fluttermane eliminate this Braviary putting in work right here. Goodbye. And yeah, now it's down to Amoongus and Palafin right here. And I'm very, very happy about the situation. All I really need is just a little bit of damage onto the Palafin to put in range of Energy Ball from Terra Grass. Fluttermane guaranteed right here. So we're going to see the Amoongus come out. It does have that regenerate, and Palafin is going to take the stage. I could see a Protect from the Amoongus and a Jet Punch just straight into the Braviary, which I think is most likely going to happen. So I'm just going to go for a... a sod... I, I'm just going to target down the... Actually, I'm just going to go for a facade into Amoongus anyway, and I'm just going to Psy Shock the Palafin slot. Like, if they don't protect, that's fine too. Yeah, like, this is okay as well. They go for the Jet Punch. It is in their Braviary. Braviary is going to go down, which is perfectly fine. And we are going to be able to get a Psy Shock some chip damage into the Palafin. That's actually really good damage because it's a critical hit right there, but it's not necessary. Pollen Puff into Grumpig, not Spore, which is actually really nice there. Okay. Because now I can go out into my Fluttermane or I can go out into my Tauros right here. I'm going to go out into my Fluttermane right here. Yeah, Fluttermane is always going to be my play here because I do have the Terra Grass Energy Ball. So that's what I'm going to click here. Just going to go for the Energy Ball into the Palafin slot and go for a Psy Shock into the Amoongus. Because if they attack with the Palafin to knock out the Grumpig, I always get the Psy Shock into the Amoongus slot. And if they protect... 
they're most likely going to go for a spore i think into the flutter me if they go for pollen puff i should be able to take a pollen puff into a minus one jet punch in the future because i just switch into Tauros the next turn to always ensure i live the jet punch and then energy ball the only problem is is if they go for a double protect right there which i guess if that's the case let's just see how much the psy shock does to amoongus because i don't think it's going to pick up a knockout but if it does that's great if not if it puts in like dazzling gleam range i could go for a dazzling gleam instead the following turn so Terragrass on the Flutter main right here. We're going to see a Terra from my opponent. I wouldn't be surprised to see if this is like Terra Dark Amoongus right here, but it could be just, it is going to be a Terra Water on the Palafin. Okay. So they're just banking on the Flutter main not being focused Ash at that point, which is understandable. They have very few win cons at this point. So I should be able to seal up this game right here. It is going to be the Jet Punch right here. It is going to be tarting down the, yep, the Flutter main. But with the Terragrass, I also have the Focus Ash, but... Energy Ball is now boosted, so I should be able to pick up the Knockout into the Palafin at this rate, which should be the case. Yep, Palafin goes down. Excellent. And uh, then the Amoongus. Goodbye, Amoongus. Uh, well, it's not fitting this turn, but Psy Shock. And then, I don't know what... Uh, maybe it was a Pollen Puff double up. We'll see. But even then, I have too many resources. Uh, it was really good that they didn't support the last turn. Yeah, they're in Dazzling Gleam range afterward. Ah, they tried to Pollen Puff there. Their Palafin, which makes sense, but I had a lot of ways to secure this endgame. So we will be able to finish off with a Psy Shock plus Shadow Ball. I think the important turns were just getting that, uh, our, that Braviary lead was so strong against this team because they really didn't have the best responses to it overall. And burning it, which was one of their ways of slowing it down after the boost, uh, shows how powerful like Facade is on this Braviary. Absolutely insane against the Ark. And I really went on a train against my opponent's team. <laughs> Talonflame at Max Caliber, King Gambit, Grimmsnarl, Fluttermane, and the Great Tusk. All right, so this matchup's pretty weird here, I'd say. We have a few tools. The, oh boy, that King Gambit is really terrifying. I do really like the Braviar here, though. Braviar is really good here. Uh, Braviar Fluttermane looks like my best lead here for the most part. I want to say it's Bravery or Fluttermane. I like the Great Tusk in the back, I think. Or not Great Tusk, the Iron Treads. Iron Treads is really good against this team for the most part. And then I think the Tauros as well as the last. Okay. I think that's what we go with. I want to lead Tauros really badly here because even if they lead King Game, I get the Mirror Herb. But, but the only problem is I'd rather... I think like Bravery or Close Combat already threatens the King Gamut, So it's like not necessary here. Uh, let's see what they decide to go for oh boy there there's quite a few options that my opponent does have right here could be i think talonflame does lead i just don't know what it leads with here could be the great tusk right here could just be the flutter main i don't know if they go to grim snarl screens mode here but oh that's what they chose to do okay so that makes it uh pretty interesting then i do lead the flutter main right here i don't think i mind this because i'd rather just go into tauros immediately here and go for a i could swap here i don't need flutter main to guarantee win the game so i think i'm just gonna go for a dazzling gleam and get the damage i want immediately i don't want like this to be like dragon dance or sword sense max caliber and i regret not getting damage off immediately playing defensive with like an iron treads here so i'd rather just go into tauros the mirror herb would also punish i guess like a dragon dance here which would be really nice but of course the grim snow if it has thunder wave can always be like a pretty annoying factor. Oh, clear amulet on the Excalibur. Good to know. Let's see if there's a defensive Terra like fire here. Because we are going to see a Terra. If it's steel, that would be nice as well. But we are going to see a defensive Terra or from the Excalibur. Going to be the water. Okay. Not too surprising. But that means I do have to be a little bit cautious of. Let's see what they decide to target right here. Light screen makes sense. Okay. And uh, then again, if it's clear amulet, they shouldn't be Icicle Spear, right? Nice damage on the Gleam. Terra Blast, Terra Water. Okay. Into the Flutter Main. Yep. For the Ice Shard afterward. Okay. So, that's not too bad. I wish we were Raging Bull. That would be really nice here. But I am just going to Wave Crash to Grimmsnarl and... Hard into Iron Shards, I suppose? Trying to figure out like if it's better to just stay in and bait the ice shard the next turn but i don't uh, actually i wouldn't mind the iron treads coming in now i think 
Although I would actually know, because I'm thinking like, okay, if I take the KO and Grimmsnarl this turn, let's say I do get the KO and Grimmsnarl, then Talonflame could come in and then Brave Bird, I don't have a switch in. So I'd rather actually just go for the Wave Crash here and just protect the Fluttermane right here on this should be Ice Shard. Yep. Because uh, Fluttermane's still a pretty big threat right here. You might be going for a uh, Reflect right here. Yep. All right. I don't know if I KO'd the Grimmsnarl, but I mean, it's just much safer anyway to do so wave crash gonna come out it is 120 base power but yeah grim's not able to take it well all right I don't have a steel resist that's my only issue so i might have to terra steel the braviary which isn't ideal but it might be helpful so i'm gonna wave crash the grim snarl again you know what i think it is just attack here i'd rather just go for the attack right here so i'm just gonna dazzle and gleam yeah, if they take the Ice Shark KO, that's pretty much what I needed to do, unfortunately. So I think it's an okay trade-off. This Max Calibre being a little bit problematic. Scary face. Okay, that's not too bad. I don't mind it because I think I plan to switch out the Tauros anyway. We are going to get the Wave Crash off into the Grimmsnarl. So Grimmsnarl does go down. Okay. Now the upcoming turns are going to be the tricky part. I do have to try to figure out a way to get rid of this Max Calibre. The problem was the Grimmsnarl was actually putting on a decent amount of offensive pressure with the Spear Break. Although maybe I could have capitalized them not going like setting up the screens to actually get damage on the Max Calibre. But <sighs> Grimmsnarl was also just tough. A Fluttermane going to come in. Okay. Which I don't mind because I'm going to boost her energy. Special attack or speed? speed okay all right i don't mind this i'm gonna protect the boros right here or should i just go hard into i could also go hard into uh the iron treads right here which i actually kind of like because the flutter can't protect the next turn or can protect the next turn but i do threaten under tailwind at least i'm gonna take the offensive position terra steel go for the tailwind now the only risky part is i'm still very concerned about the great tusk if it is in the back However, I'm feeling pretty happy about this position where if I can get rid of these two Pokemon, I should be able to win with uh, as long as I get one hit off into the Great Tusk with a Wave Crash with Tauros afterward to break. Yeah, Focus Sash broken into Wave Crash, but I do have to stall out turn to reflect. So still nowhere near a over game by far, but it's definitely a bit tricky. Although their best moves to really hit Bravey are resisted this turn with the Terra Steel. So I might be able to buy one turn right here and get the Tailwind. Moonblast is going to come out into the Iron Treads, which we are able to tank very well. Uh, okay. That is interesting right here. Okay. That they went for the Dragon move. Now, the thing is, Excalibur is going to take double damage upcoming. Excalibur has a really high base HP, right? It's better to go for Endeavor, I'm pretty sure, here into a Brave Bird. I think I'm going to try it out. Let's see. Let's see this Endeavor. Does this Endeavor work? If this Endeavor works. That's amazing. And especially if they protect here. Okay. That's step one of the process. Please. Please. Please KO the Max Cal. Oh, that did a lot less than I thought. <laughs> but I KO with Brave Bird anyway because Brave Bird is so good. Okay. That was actually such a sad endeavor. I felt like Bex Calibre had like really high HP. So, or maybe that's, I guess maybe that was like, that might've been more of a speedy Bex Calibre, I suppose. Now that I think about it then. Okay. But, uh, Bravier with the double base, uh, double power Brave Bird. Oh, King Gamma in the back. Huh. Uh, or should be able to win that because it can't Terra. So I guess I just double up the flutter main since it can't protect and I win the game. Yeah. That's basically the play. I don't know if Iron Head actually KOs, even though Flutter Main has really poor defense, it's just because of the reflect up, so I just double it up anyway. Uh because I'll get the defiant boost from the King Gambit with the mirror up on Tor on Tauros, I should be okay here. Let's see. There are a few things that I really don't want to say that could happen here that could definitely impact this game. And they didn't go for a double protect here, which I'm surprised. And yeah, I didn't KO because of the uh, yeah, I didn't KO. But they Shadow Balled and I should survive easily. Yep, because they didn't Sucker Punch. So Brave Bird going to KO the Flutter Main and I think we seal it up here. Let's see what the King Gambit does if it did, did double up right here. How to Cleave. All right, no Sucker Punch attempt, which I'm a little bit surprised about because if they Sucker Punch, this would have definitely been a 
Honest, it could have been a lost case. Although it would have been like, I think a mind game right here upcoming because uh, last our tail when they protect. If the king ever doesn't have protect, I think they lose. And I don't, don't think sucker punch at plus one KOs the iron treads, but it depends on the item on the king gambit, I suppose. But yeah, with the mirror herb, we are going to be able to take the attack boost for plus two. So I don't care if the King Gambit has the reflect up. We are KOing this King Gambit right here with a stomping tantrum into a close combat. And hopefully uh, that should... Uh, Sucker Punch Crit could actually knock out the Taurus right here. So uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> Please don't Sucker Punch Crit my Taurus. Please don't Sucker Punch Crit my Taurus. Please. Sucker Punch. Oh, Sucker Punch Crit did not. Okay. I think it had to be like black glasses to KO with a sucker punch crit, but that was definitely a weak sucker punch. But Taurus has a really good physical defense, I suppose. King Gambit does go down, and that is a victory. The endeavors are pretty cool here because they have to watch out because if they're not picking up knockouts, I am able to get like an endeavor strat off if I am able to get the tail up. They didn't bring Talon Flame, they did go to Grimstorm mode, so I ended up being very happy, especially with no great tusk, because that Pokemon was just such a pain to switch into especially next to like fluttermane and uh what we saw the excalibur so i'm really happy with like the double up there even though like that endeavor didn't do much who knows maybe it did more than saw me tantrum because at that point like it is behind the reflect but <laughs> uh the bravery are really clutching it out in that game fluttermane iron bundle mouse hold the golden go annihilate and mark Pro. this is a uh, really uh, I don't know what even to say right here. I don't know what to say. A Braviar can go do a lot of work right here, potentially. That Golden Go is actually such a big threat. How do I get rid of... How do I deal with Golden Go Mousehold, actually, combination-wise? Trying to figure out, like, how I actually even play around that. Because the problem is, if I want to, like, Snarl with, like, Grumpig, if I lead Grumpig, which I kind of want to do, actually, unless they lead Mousehold Annihilate, which... That's the case. I do have some idea of how to handle it, but uh, this looks tricky. This looks really tricky. I'm going to go with the Grumpig plus the Braviary, I think, here. Yeah, Grumpig plus the Braviary. And then in the back, Iron Treads and the Fluttermane, I think. And no Tauros is really weird, but it only does well if I'm able to get the Mirror Boost. And even then, the... And I could just be bulked up by then at that point. So I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I'm really scared of Golden Go plus Mousehold, which is why I kind of want to try to lead the Grumpick here and hope that they don't do the Defiant play turn one with like Annihilate. Double Ghost is really weird for this team, but uh, okay. This is a pretty nice lead for here for me, actually, as they lead the Murkrow plus the Iron Bundle, which is not a lead I would have ever expected, but it works out here for me. Okay. Speed. All right. This is probably an ice move. We can get Tailwind up, but I don't know if they're going to go for... I'm trying to figure out, like, what their options are. I think I just Power Gem right here. The... I think I... I mean, Close Combat can knock out, actually. Huh. I think I want to just Power Gem the Merc on Close Combat. I think the only way they kill me with Iron Bundle is if they are a Terra of Ice Set and they tear immediately. This baby, I think, should live one Freeze Dry here. And we go get set up. Icy Wind. I didn't want a Tailwind because I thought that they could have taunted with the Murkrow and I definitely didn't want that happening. So, okay. That's really weird, but the close combat is able to knock out the Iron Bundle immediately. Uh, <laughs> I could have knocked out the Murkrow and the Power Gem actually just KO'd the Iron Bundle. That would have been really solid, but okay. I'll definitely take that. Here comes a Power Gem into the Murkrow right there. Excellent. Very, very solid. Yeah, I, I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. <laughs> uh, what are they bringing out next? Urko's threatened by Power Gem. I don't know if I tear it to Grumpig. It's definitely a thing I'm considering. Fluttermane, okay. All right, so we're not tearing the Grumpig here, unfortunately. But... Uh, Iron Treads is just such a safe switch here. Yeah, it is such a safe switch. I can go for the Power Gem into the Murkrow and go out into Iron Treads right here. On what should be like a Moonblast slash Dazzling Gleam in the Foul Play. 
maybe a brave bird and a grump pick which i think i should leave a combination of dazzling gleam life or plus a foul play i'd imagine yeah, or a brave bird so we'll go on to iron chest right here and play a defensive game because having bravery is still nice i could have terra steel but if a foul play doubles up into that slot it's like a really pointless terra i think so not really worth it Arco reveals protect okay was not expecting that one but that works as in gleam okay so they're getting the chip i mean the thing is they can't pressure the yeah it's life orb okay so i'm i mean this turn i just KO'd a murkrow power gem i feel like yeah, I'm just going to take the KO onto Murkrow Power Gem. I feel like Fluttermane should always... So, either they foul play double up the Iron Treads with foul play Shadow Ball. Or, they could go Golden Go, which I'm a little bit concerned about. I mean, this play, I want to Snarl and Iron Head to Murkrow. Yeah, because I covered a Golden Go at least. There's a swap from that's... Is this Golden? No. Oh, wait, if it's a Nihilate, but I'm in a lot of trouble. I should have thought about that more. Okay, I should have thought about that a little bit more. <laughs> this is very concerning now. Okay, but they went for foul play. Okay. Here comes an Iron Head. Let's annihilate. Just be Dodge. Dodge. I need you to dodge the Snarl. No, why did you dodge the Snarl? <laughs> okay. All right, so that Annihilate uh, might be a bit of a problem. Although this is actually so interesting because I don't know if Shadow Ball actually kills Grump Pick in this situation. All right. So I have some decent answers in the back. I think I want to... You might think I'm crazy, and I might be crazy realistically, but... I'm going to protect the Iron Chest here, and I'm going to Icy Wind Attempt. Because they might try to Shadow Ball right here. They could Shadow Ball either slot in Rage Fist, or they could Shadow Ball Drain Punch. If they go for a Shadow Ball plus Rage Fist, that's fine. I get Fluttermane in, I think, and Fluttermane's really good here. And if they protect Fluttermane, that works too. I feel like that means you should be targeting Iron Treads, because Iron Treads... I feel like this is Iron Treads target then, right? Yeah, okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So they target the Iron Treads because the Iron Treads would still be able to dredge in the Fluttermane next turn now speak because Tailwind's out. So I get the Icy Wind off and you might be thinking, Jeez, why are you giving this Annihilate even more boost? You were just afraid of the first one. And yes, I gave it plus four, but if I can overwhelm the... If I can overwhelm this Pokemon, then I should be fine afterwards. So all I have to do is just KO that Fluttermane slot now. So Tailwind Peter's out. I'm just going to double check my Iron Treads to make sure. Did I get speed boost? Yeah, I do have speed boost, so I should be able to knock out. So I'm going to go for a size Shock into the slot, and I should be able to go for an Iron Head into the Fluttermane. Because Iron Head should be able to KO. Yep, Iron Head KOs the Fluttermane. Excellent. All right, perfect. And now we get a free... Let's see if they're faster. Okay, they are faster. Okay, so that's a pretty decently fast... Annihilate, which is good to know. All right. I wonder if I could bait the Terra. I feel like I can. I do want to try to bait the Terra right here. I'm going to go out into Fluttermane and just see what they decide. Let's let's see what the response is. Because they still have Terra, right? So I need to figure out the response right here. So I'm going to protect with both Pokemon and then... I could do like an Endeavor play if they tear into like something that's not Ghost. And Endeavor... Endeavor probably stronger than Iron Head, I'd imagine. If it's Terra Fire, then they stomp me Tantrum and do a lot. So either way, it's a win for me. But yeah, I do have to watch out though. And the reason I went Fluttermane here as well over Braviary is because they don't get the Drain Punch healing from Braviary, which is the most that they can recover from right now. Because I need to start piling on the damage into the Annihilate. They could protect the Annihilate here, which is fine. It doesn't really change much numbers here. They didn't Terra. Okay. Huh. I really was hoping that they would Terra, but so let's see what the response is. So let, it better not be bulk up. Yeah, it's Drain Punch. Okay. So that is cool right here. I am going to be able to Shadow Ball here. I will Shadow Ball. 
a special defense drop doesn't change well it helps me i guess <laughs> at this rate they're plus six it's not changing anything i'm going for the stomping tantrum into the i just endeavor actually i could endeavor here endeavor would be a sick play you know what i'm gonna do it <laughs> i'm gonna do it if they don't it's cool as well because i i should be able to shadow ball the following turn unfortunately i don't get the endeavor off but it's cool i'm able to shadow ball the annihilate this is gonna do a good amount yep really solid damage and drain punch to heal back the recovery okay but uh, with that icy wind bravier should is always faster than the annihilate the problem is that they recover a lot more i kind of wish i did actually stomping tantrum now but <laughs> a little bit of a style i wanted but it's okay i still think braviary plus the fluttermane should be able to ko because shadow ball into Braybird will finish it off and you know what let's do it right here what terror could they be to even change this position? Because Star gets screwed over by Dazzling Gleam the next turn, so that doesn't even matter. Steel doesn't change anything because Shadow Ball is still going to be resist. Nah, Steel doesn't really change that much, I think. Because I get two Shadow Balls off. They're going to protect to get Leftovers Recovery, which makes a lot of sense here. Alright. Shadow Ball. Into Bray Bird. Yep, but it's all right here because again, he, they can't heal too, too much from Braviary itself because, well, A, they're going to take a lot of damage right here with Shadow Ball. I don't think they can heal enough to where they live like multiple attacks from my Fluttermane because my Fluttermane is guaranteed to at least get two attacks off. And if they target the Braviary to get the Drain Punch healing, I guarantee three hits with the Fluttermane. And even with all the Leftovers recovery, I don't think they have enough to heal us even with like a Terra on their side, so... I do regret not stopping Tantrum, though. But I did kind of want to... I did kind of want to make that play. <laughs> I think they have to be terrified they, if they did make that play, right? It has to be. Okay. Terrifier, yep. Pretty much what you expect. It had to be either Terrifier or Terror Steel because they were worried about the stopping Tantrum at that point, so... Let's see. Can we get the KO right here with Shadow Ball Brave Bird? I feel like we can. Brave has been really strong. And we do outspeed after that icy win we got from earlier from the Grump pick, which was really important. So goodbye, Annihilate. Eliminated. So beautiful cleanup from Braviary. And yeah, that Snarl might have been a little bit foolish. I really thought that they might have had the uh, a Golden Go in the back. But when they brought in an aisle, I'm like, oh no, this is really bad. But thankfully, we're still able to pull off, especially with that icy win. That icy win was actually really crucial from the annihilate be or from the grump pick onto the annihilate because it allowed me to secure the outspeed the annihilate because I didn't know it's speed tier and Braviary wasn't like the fastest invested. So being able to just guarantee out speed afterward for a double up, which I was pretty much planning, allowed me to secure this end game. All right, let's go over to games. Game one, Braviary caused my opponent a lot of problems and I was able to preserve Fluttermane to handle the Palafin in the end game. Game two, Bex Caliber with the Terra Water gave me a lot of issues, but I was able to knock it out through Reflect with Braviary and a double damage from Glive Rush. It might've been better for me to focus on the Bex Caliber, however, and get some damage earlier. In game three, other than the Snarl on the Annihilate switching, which was a huge mistake looking back, I was able to get a very solid position with the early game damage as I took too many knockouts and set up to deal with the Annihilate in a 3v1 scenario. This seems actually really good, and I mean really good. I think Braviary is a fantastic mon in general. Like, I think it has been slept on, and it's just bulky. It's a little bit harder to use. Might have to use this Terra because of Fluttermane and Iron Bundle, but with the Terra Steel and the Fine to Punish stuff like Icy Wind, it does so much damage damage and that facade trick was super cool the grump pig absolutely incredible we didn't face the into the armor which combination unfortunately but it was still able to do some massive work i was very impressed by this team overall if you do want to try it out there is a rental code on your screen however you could also check out the details of the team as well as the creator down below in the description and of course subscribe to the channel for more vdc content